Koya Minasang, Konnichiwa, Samurai Engineering Test. So let us uh, discuss about uh, the rest of the topic, fire protection and uh, sanitary. Okay, so, so as you can see on this uh, contents, so this uh, fire, fire protection, so stairways, emergency, egress, exterior doors, this are fire protection. Uh, provisions, okay, and then ventilation, smoke, these are sanitary. So, let's uh, continue with our discussion. Right, starting from the speech. So, please uh, allow me to uh, get the confirmation. So, clear po, sir. Shout out to you, Giselle. Okay. So, let us discuss uh, fire separations. So, fire separations, garage, and homes. So, many fire begins in garage. Okay. So, unfortunately, garage fire open are more intense than fires that start elsewhere because of presence of gasoline, cardboard, newspaper, and other flammable materials. So, this is true. But, since in our country, we do not have uh, <coughs> we, do not, uh, we do not have the culture of having a garage, as you can see, even in our, in our own city, we park our vehicles along the street okay so that is not good but we do it okay that is our culture we do not have our own garage okay if you park uh, your uh, vehicles on the street it will not uh, build up the uh, the uh, dangerous level of gases as you can see here that would start a fire okay because along the street that is open area and therefore it will not build up the concentration of gases that uh, would uh, go up to the level of dangerous level okay that's why it is safe to park it on the uh, on the side road okay but it is not good and it is illegal actually. It is illegal to park it on the side road. So, uh, because of build up of presence of gasoline okay, and the flammable materials like newspaper, carbons. But in our country, many fires do not begin in garage because of that. Okay? Because of that. Our city is the, what, top 10? We are in the top 10 cities in our country. But we can say 90% do not have their own garage. Okay? Okay? Do not have their own garage. Okay? And therefore, the fire starts in the kitchen in our country. That is, many fires begin in the kitchen. Okay? So this is not correct, no? is not uh, true in our uh, local situation. Fire safety is an important rationale for uh, code provision. Because of this, the uh, IRC has special requirement to help prevent the spreading of garage fires into the home. So, we do not need to do this because it is not uh, the same in our country. We just have to be familiar with this because it, our country may end up following this anyway later on. Okay, so that's uh, for familiarization purposes. So, fire rated door with a minimum rating of 20 minutes is required. So, this is not also applicable in our country. The minimum in our country is what? One hour fire rating. One hour fire rating. 
Dans le Léman. So, so this is what? 20 minutes. Fire door. Okay. What do you mean by 20 minutes? Uh, fire rated door? That door specifically will not be burned down within 20 minutes. That is 20 minutes. Okay. So, violation. Do not install pet doors and doors that separate the garage from the dwelling. Okay. So, it is not always present in our country anyway. So, you can do this for your main door and so on, but not or your back doors, but not on the doors separating the garage from the dwelling. Okay? So, in words that are uh, shared between your dwelling and your garage, use at least the 20 minute priority door. So, we already talked about that. Use the doors that are at least okay, thickness. So, thickness of doors. Okay. This is what? One and three eight. One and three eight in stick doors. If you convert this to mm, one and three eight. Convert into uh, Just convert it. Aye. It is equal to thirty five. Okay, thirty five mm. Thirty five mm thick. So at least thirty five mm thick doors. Okay. So you can have your. Uh, engineering plan with uh, 35 mm doors okay. so install uh, self closing hinges on doors between so self closing automatically it will close that is what we mean by self closing so definition of a garage garage is defined as the space for parking motor vehicles that is completely closed to the outdoors on three or more sides okay so at least three sides close that is a garage it uh, typically has so meaning if it is uh, closed uh, on three or more sides then it is a confined area and therefore the possibility of building up a gas that is dangerous or flammable could happen potentially happen but a structure that meets the requirement but has no door is still considered a grass. Okay. Okay. A car uh, port is a space for parking motor vehicles that is open to the outdoors on at least two sides. So that is the difference between car port and a garage. Now we know the difference. So car port uh, has two, okay? two sides open. Okay. Two or more sides open. That is a carport. So, meaning there are no what? There are no walls. That is a carport. So, garage, plenty of walls. Okay? A space with two solid walls. Open the house walls. A partially open wall. And an opening without a vehicle door is considered a carport. Garage and the carports may be attached to or detached from. Okay, uh, dwelling. Okay. So, next topic will be fire separation walls and ceilings. Okay. Walls and ceilings that uh, separate the home from garage should be covered on the garage side with gypsum or drywall that at least one half inch thick. So, one half inch thick that is 13 mm. A garage must have a ceiling made of type X drywall. Okay. Drywall for garage ceiling. Okay. 
requirement this is uh, for uh, five provincial okay that's a minimum of five over eight inch thick okay that is thickness material requirement okay if the garage is beneath a habitable room okay beneath meaning under so meaning the ceiling of the garage is actually the flooring of the second floor for example that is uh, what we mean by that no? that is what we mean by beneath the habitable room not only the second room but habitable room that means what bedroom that is habitable room obviously you cannot have what the uh, dining room and living room and uh, that area obviously that is what bedroom but anyway it is not impossible to have living room and other habitable rooms in the second floor so type x has a fibrous reinforcement to help the drywall maintain its integrity when exposed to high heat so that's why it is a requirement for fire uh, protection okay type x so this is what we mean by type x type x drywall is required on garage ceiling if the space above is habitable okay so this is what we mean by type x drywall okay this uh, gypsum board okay so if the uh, garage ceiling is uh, or the garage is uh, beneath the habitable room but if the area above this the uh, the uh, garage is for example toilet and bathroom there's no need because uh, toilet and bathroom is not habitable room okay so we need to have what maintain the uh, same fire separation for drywall penetration such as attic scuttle holes pull down attic stairs Okay, so protection for fire, really, gas vents, plumbing pipes. So gas vents or a plumbing system and plumbing pipe. So those holes, okay, uh, must have the proper fire separation for those penetration, meaning you have to what? Uh, penetrate plumbing pipes in this gypsum board. So do it properly. Okay. maintain so you have to maintain same fire separation okay so that is really for fire protection must uh, pull down at the stairs so pull down meaning uh, it is not uh, fixed the stairs that are fixed you can what pull it down so that you can uh, go up the stairs and you have to what uh, set it up so that it will not what uh, it will not but why do we need a pull down stairs because we need a space okay so it will obstruct the dwelling unit obstruct the area so if we set it up so now this space is free okay for habitation but if you pull it down that is the only time that you have to use the stairs okay so that is the uh, context i am giving this because uh, that is not common in our country okay? that is not uh, common there are very few instances that uh, we have an attic in our uh, country another difference we are just copying the code. Okay. okay. Seal penetrations between the garage and the home, such as pipes and ducts. Okay. So we need to seal. So put up the sealing material. So that's like what I've said. If there are penetration. There are holes. 
for uh, gas mains, for pipes, for uh, ducts, okay? Uh, we need to seal it off by sealing material, okay? And uh, with materials that resist the free flow of fire and smoke to prevent uh, fire from one space going to the other space, okay? That is the purpose of sealing for fire but uh, separation by separation of one space to the other okay? uh, uh, that uh, that is technical term per separation but uh, currently that is not uh, being used okay? segregation okay? so it is replaced by some other terms such material include fire resistant coal. So coal is what the material used in plumbing to connect one pipe to another. Okay, that is coal. So this is what we mean by pull down stairs. So if you uh, set it up, it will uh, what be a uh, plus. Uh, beautifully on the same level as the ceiling so it uh, actually looks like a ceiling if you set it up but if you uh, pull it down though it looks like a eh, stairs okay pull down stairs okay relation of that do not install pull down stairs in a garage ceiling unless they maintain the required fire separation. The standard plywood covers do not maintain fire separation. So use what? Chips on board. So that is uh, the violation. Use the proper material. Okay? Okay? Do not install pull down stairs in garage ceiling unless they maintain, maintain required fire separation so it the requirement fire separation so here as you can see on the sides there are no provision for sealing up okay, on the sides okay, so and also the material sealing material must be sealing and sealing <laughs> We cannot distinguish. Ceiling is this uh, part of the house. C E I L I N G. So, ceiling. The material called seal. S E A L C. The same pronunciation. Okay. Ceiling. Okay. So now uh, let's go to the next. Uh, it's back ducts and register in garage. Use at least seven twenty-six gauge sheet steel. So twenty-six gauge meaning the thickness of the uh, metal. Okay. For uh, constructing it's back ducts, are installed in a garage and ducts that pass through garage walls and ceilings. Do not install its box supply or uh, return air openings in the garage. Okay. Do not install its box supply or return uh, air openings in the garage. Okay. Supply and return air are not to be installed in the garage. Okay. It's back. What do you mean by it's back? It's heating, B, ventilating, A, air, C, conditioning. So, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. That is what we mean by it's back. So, meaning it is mechanical. So, that's why we are talking it right now. No? So, mechanical system in our engineering utilities. Okay? So, for ventilation... We do not uh, use heating in our country. However, we are using air conditioning. So, ventilation and air conditioning. Okay? 
So, flexible ducts and duct boards uh, may be attached to steel ducts up to the steel ducts penetrate the garage firewall. So, next uh, topic would be stairs. Okay. What about interior and exterior stairs? So they also are regu regulated closely by most codes. Okay. So, they are inherently dangerous section of the building. The regulation differs, however, even on the very basic guidelines like uh, the size ratio. There is a requirement. We already know the requirement in our uh, local building code. We have the what? The slope requirement. The slope requirement is provided in the code by suggesting the height of the stairs, the height of the steps of the stairs, and the what the size of the steps, size of the steps and the height. So that provision gives us the ratio of the slope of the stairs. But as you can see even even in condominium units, you can see very but uh, severe violation of that. Okay? So there is a maximum slope of the stairs. Okay? Oh, it's not possible. This is not the stairs. This is not a good stairs. Too much slope. So there is a maximum level according to the code. Okay? Many of the regulations deal with the lighting issues, including the type and location of picture switch or oh, a light must be provided in this area stairs okay. as you can see during emergency during night time without lighting on that portion of the uh, uh, space okay. the size uh, gripability and location of handrails gripability uh, the side uh, handrails okay. gripability mostly we do not we do not do that okay, in the design. So, as a, a civil engineer in the future, you have to design it. Okay. Size, gripability, location of hundreds, railings, balusters, okay, railing balusters. What do you mean by that? Okay? The support for the uh, hundreds, that is balusters. Also accounts for much of the regulatory wording on the stairway. So, Interior, stairway, lighting, and switching. Okay. So, we should illuminate all the stairway landings and treads. So, landings. What do you mean by landings? Okay. So, this is a small space on the stair itself. Uh, that looks like the rest area, resting area. Okay. That is what we call landing. Treads is the actual step. The thread okay. we're in our uh, feet would land okay our feet would land on every step okay that is what we will thread take note of the spelling of this thread and the thread that uh, uh, is being used for kite okay for uh, flying a kite so connecting a thread on a kite, so the thread has uh, a spelling with H. This is uh, a spelling without H. Okay. So the areas at the top and bottom of the stairs are landings. Okay. So even that uh, it looks it looks like uh, what uh, resting area. Top and bottom. Sometimes intermediate, sometimes intermediate at the middle, sometimes at the middle. So it is not a thread. It's not a thread, but it is uh, uh, bigger, a little bit bigger uh, thread. But it's uh, usually not not being what not being used in our country. Okay? So you have to what uh, uh, illuminate those uh, landings and threads. For example, light fixture at the top of the stairway may not provide enough light to illuminate the bottom. So you need 
But one lighting fixture, two or more. Okay, especially if the stairway changes direction. Okay, the light must uh, be capable of illuminating threads and landings to at least one foot candle. One foot candle is the unit of measure. Okay, one foot candle. No, a foot candle is the unit of light measurement approximating the amount of light you receive from a birthday cake candle when it is held 12 inches from your eyes. So that is the one the meaning of one foot candle the light intensity that you can see from a cake candle one foot away from your eyes okay. the same amount of light intensity you need to be installed in this area of stairway okay so you must locate a switch for interior stairway lights at the top and bottom of the stair of all interior stairs at least six risers. Okay. The switch. Okay. The location of the switch must be at the top and bottom of all interior stairs with at least six risers. So if the stairs has at least Six risers, meaning six steps. Okay. That is required already. If uh, the, the stairs only has five, so it may not be required. Okay, maybe one uh, switch could on satisfy. But if uh, the riser has six or more, usually the average is 11 to 13 steps or uh, 11 to 13 risers. That the, the distance, the horizontal, uh, the vertical distance is what we call riser. The riser. So, there are uh, usually average of 11 to 13 risers in a whole, in a complete what, uh, stairs in a country. You can, uh, you can count. You can count their uh, stairs in your uh, home. Okay. Count it. How many steps? And measure, measure the risers and the thread, measure it, uh, and compute the uh, slope, uh, I think, mostly violation, mostly violation, okay. Only one switch is required for uh, interior uh, stairs with fewer than six risers, so just like what I've said, okay. So, all the switches must be located without climbing any steps. So, at the start, you need to have the switch already. It is a what requirement. Okay? Exterior stairs, lighting and switching. Codes for outdoor stairs differ somewhat from interior requirements and recommendation. In exterior, you must locate a light fixture near the top landing near the top landing for stairs providing access to doors above grade level you must also light is uh, on the top but uh, on the interior top and bottom okay? you must also locate a light fixture near the bottom landing for stairs providing access to doors below if the answer is if the stairs is providing access to those below mid level. Locate the switch inside the dwelling for stair stair. Okay? So, very clear. Very clear. So, if uh, the stairs providing access going up, so, put the light near the top. So, if the stairs providing access going down below the grid level, so, need to uh, put the uh, light uh, inside the dwelling port exterior. Okay? So, definition of the terms. Landing. A landing is a flat surface at the bottom and top of the stairway. Also at the middle, not only the bottom. So, for example, this one. 
Okay, for some reason. It can be called a landing. This is this could be a landing. Actually, this is a thread. This is also a thread. But actually, it is called what? Winder thread. Winder thread. Wind. Wind meaning rotation. No? Wind. Okay. So, these three. One, two, three. They are all called winder. But you can provide a landing here, intermediate landing. Okay. Like in our school. Like in our school. The stairs has a landing at the middle. Okay. Okay. And the, so, we have the landing here. This is the area of landing. And also the area of landing. So, take a look at the landing area. It is it is a, a little bit larger than the single thread. So that is what we call thread. Okay, thread. So, riser is the distance or the height of the thread. This height is what we call the riser. And this uh, space is also called the riser. Nosing is the small protrusion. That is what we call nosing. A small protrusion of the thread uh, compared to the riser or the protruding part. That is what we call nosing. Okay. okay, so stairway is flight of stairs. Okay. okay. Thread is the horizontal part of the stair. And the riser is the vertical part of the stair. So, thread and riser. The vertical and horizontal part. So, measure. So, uh, assign task. Okay. Measure the stairs in your home. Picture. You have a picture, then label the measurement of thread and riser. So, I will put up I will put up uh, what? Uh, FB thread so that you can have your answer to this task. Okay? Measure the thread and riser. Okay? In your house, if you do not have stairs in your house, you have your neighbor or any what relatives, okay? So neighbor, friends, okay? And then that is your task, okay? So, I will uh, post it. So, you have to label it. For example, thread. How many mm is the dimension? Meaning from this point to this point. Okay, uh, riser. What is the height of the riser? From this uh, corner to that. Okay, so, that is the riser. So, light switch. The location of light switch. So, before you step into the stairs, you already have the switch. Do not put the switch at this uh, intermediate location. Put it on the, what? Start. Okay. So, this is interior. Interior stairs. So, this has something to do with the presence of switch and light at the start of the stairs. Top and bottom. So, for example, this one. This is the landing, intermediate landing. This is not yet. This is not yet the second floor. Okay, this is not yet the second floor. It is only an intermediate landing. So, a landing could be a top and bottom and intermediate. Not only top and bottom. Okay. So, for example, here. It is going down. Interior. So, we have light switch already there. Uh, we need the lighting fixture already here. And also handrails. This is the handrails. Okay? Set up a handrails. Usually, do, we do not have that. We do not usually have this handrails. This is a requirement. It's a requirement. 
Okay. So, therefore, in your uh, task, okay, in your task, all not only provide the uh, thread and the uh, riser dimension, you also need to to show the provision. So, lighting switch, lighting, and handrails. Okay? Show the provision. So, a picture, picture, a picture, and label. Okay? So, either uh, interior uh, stairs or exterior stairs. Okay? So, one light at the center landing may not be enough to illuminate the top and bottom landing. Okay, for example, right here. We have the switch already here. Okay, just before. So, this is the landing, intermediate landing. This is not yet the ground floor. So, going down, landing, then another going down. Because the stairs changes direction. Okay, so that is the landing. One. In, in this uh, example, one light fixture is enough. Show also the light fixture. Okay? Show also the light fixture. Okay? So provide the picture, label, and the light provision. Okay? So, I will post it so that you can have an answer on our so post it light this is a requirement so you can decide if uh, one light is enough or not so what is the criteria of that design for light one foot candle as we already discussed one foot candle so the illumination the illumination here must be one foot candle so you need to have a device that measure the intensity of light put it here on the step on the first step, then measure if uh, this area, this space is receiving one put candle illumination. Okay, next. Oh, exterior, exterior stair. Okay. So exterior stair, we already know. Provide the finished uh, width of at least 36 inches above the handrail. Okay. 36 inches here. Okay. From this point, minimum 36 inches. Okay. So this is what? This is 31.5 inches minimum from the handrail. So meaning the handrail would be how many? How much is the handrail? 31.5. So 36 minus 31.5. That is uh, 4.5. Okay. So that is the handrail. So above the handrail, that is 36. But below the handrail, that is 31. Okay? That is the width of the stairs. So, including this one, measure it. Measure it. You can use SI unit, you can use inches. So, measure this one. Okay? Width, uh, riser, thread. Okay? Those are the measurement. Light, and so on. These are the requirement. Okay, these are the requirement. 
Okay? Let's start the requirement. Riser. Maximum riser. 7 and 3 port. You know? 7 and 3 port. Maximum riser. From this uh, top of the thread to this corner. This is what we call nosing. This protrusion. This part. This part is what we call nosing. Okay? That is the riser height. Maximum. Okay? The riser can be non-uniform. Uniform riser meaning the same, the same uh, height can be non-uniform, but the difference is only three eight, right? Three eight between two risers. Okay, because the last, the last step have to be adjusted. Okay. Well, the last step is actually not exactly equal. So, meaning, this is also maximum. Uh, we need to have the minimum. We have that minimum. Okay? So, but, so, here, I will uh, also take a screenshot of this. Let's uh, take a screenshot of this. I will put it on our I have difficulty. Very slow. Very slow response. I have difficulty in my device. I am actually taking this screenshot. That's why uh, so I will just take this screenshot of this. Take the measurements. If you do not do it in actual, you do not have an experience. Just by looking at it, it's not an experience. An experience is when you, your body moves and do it uh, on your own, not just looking at it. That is not an experience. Experience is your body moves, okay? Your body, uh, for example, making the measurement. That is an experience. Make this size. Okay. So, minimum. There is no minimum from the code about the height of the arrow. You know, there is only maximum. So, so, do not allow open risers to fit a 4 inch diameter spear for pass through. This uh, includes interior stairs, interior stairs such as decks and balconies but does not include spiral stairs. Okay. Do not include the height of carpets, carpet pads, rugs, and runners when measuring riser height. Okay? So, if uh, we have rugs, carpets, runners here, do not include that in your measurement of riser. Okay? So, that is riser height. What about this one, no? Thread depth, okay? Open risers, so open, okay? Look at the riser, they are open, okay? So, pillar strip, so this is open riser, this is a riser with pillar strip. So, there is one pillar strip, one pillar strip, okay? Okay? 
So, what is the minimum for thread? 10 inches. Here. 10 inches. The minimum for thread. Here. Okay. 10 inches. Minimum. Starting from the nose. Okay. Do not start the measurement from the uh, riser. Start the measurement from the nose to the nose. So, nose to nose distance. Okay. Nose to nose distance. Okay. So, start your measurement here. Not here. Okay. Clear. So, 10 uh, inches. Okay. So, this Now, we have a thread slope Slope threads and landings Not more than 2% from horizontal in any direction So, you can have a slope of a thread okay? Not more than 2% Okay so, provide thread nosing depth of at least 3 port inch. So, 3 port inch meaning the distance from this point to this point. Not more than 1 and 1 port inch. So, maximum 1 and 1 port. Minimum 3 port. That is one. But in our, in our country, very seldom, very seldom you find out nosing on the stairs. Okay? Our stairs is completely having the corners. Okay? With corner like this. The corner like that. Usually, we don't, we don't design nosing in our stairs in this country. Okay? But anyway, if you have your picture, so take a picture and then provide the label. Okay. Winder stairs. So for winder stairs, meaning for stairs like spiral. No? So we have the following. For example, the walk line is located 12 inches from the thread's narrow side. For this winder or winder stairs. Okay. A stairway headroom height. So, what is the height requirement? Okay. 80 inches. 80 inches again is 2 meters. So, headroom height for the stairs. Okay. 2 meters. Okay. So, how do you measure it? So, how to measure uh, 80 inches? Vertically. From a slope plane connecting the thread nosing or from the finish floor of a landing. Okay. So from the landing, finish floor, or from the slope of thread nosing to the ceiling. Okay. That is 2 meters. So step up from the landings. Okay. This is a landing. Step up. So what is the measurement? 7 and 3 port. What about the stairway landings? Okay. Make landings at least as wide as the stairway. Same. Same width. Okay. What is the width? 31.5 below and uh, 36 above the hundreds. Also label if you have hundreds or not. Okay. We have the handrails here. This is the handrail. And this is a handrail. So this is a handrail going down. This is the handrail going up. Okay? Because we assume that people are right-handed. People are right-handed. We assume. That's why this is the handrail for going up. Uh, going down. This is the handrail for going up. And this is what we call baluster. These are the baluster. This this would this portion these are the balusters okay okay so 
Guards. Definition. A guard is a barrier that protects occupants from falling from a raised surface such as a stairway, deck, or balcony. Guards are often called guard rails. Okay? So guards and guard rails. Okay? When the guard also serve as a handrail, however, guards need not be an open rail. A guard may be a partial height solid wall, okay? A partial height wall containing safety glazing or other structure that complies with requirements. So, guard. That is what we mean by guard. It sometimes, it is sometimes equivalent to guard rails or hand rails, okay? Hand rails and guards. Location. Provide a handrail on at least one side of every continuous flight. Okay. At least one side. Minimum. Okay. Handrail. Okay. So therefore, one side. Another side. So there are two sides. So that is a full design. Okay. If you provided only one side, so that is half side. Provide a guard at the uh, raised floor surfaces more than 30 inches above. So again, 30 inches is how much? 750 mm above the adjacent interior and exterior surface. Okay. So that is the uh, provision for guard at the uh, raised floor. About the height. Install the handrail at least 34 inches. Okay. 34 inches and not more than 38 inches. So that is the height of the guard. Okay. 34 to 38. What do you mean by 38? It says compute. To is a unit. 38 times 25.4. So, that is 38 is uh, 960. 960 mm and 34 is how much? 34 is 860. So, 860 to 960 mm. That must be the height. So, 960 is about 1 meter. Uh, that is about 1 meter. So, 960 or 950. 950. So, 850 to 950. Right? That uh, might be the what? The uh, soft conversion. Okay? So, so handrails. Okay? Guard. So, the guard. This is the provision. Again, Guard is the provision for what? Barrier to protect occupants from falling off from a race or peso. Uh, to protect you from falling off this, this side. So, it is a guard. This guard has a guardrail. This is the guardrail. This guard, guardrail, okay? But sometimes they are called guardrail anyway. So that is the height 34 to 38 or 850 to 950 mm. This is what we mean by slope of nosing thread or no. slope of the thread nosing. Okay? So from this point. To that point, that is the height of the guard or guard trail, 34 to 38. From this point also, up to the ceiling, that is 2 meters. Okay? To the ceiling. Uh, maximum. Maximum is uh, 4 inches. Meaning 100 mm. 100 mm maximum. Distance. From this point to this point, maximum. Okay. 
Box row between vertical members. Okay. So, yes, 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 no. Because of what? Gripability. Grip. You can grip. You can grip. You can grip. You cannot grip properly. It is better grip. Better grip. It is uh, also a good grip. But not this one. This is gripability. No? Too large to grip. Okay? Too large to be grippable. It does not meet the dimension standard. Okay? So, do not provide this one. No. Yes. 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 Okay? So, there is a design. There is a design. They are not uh, there arbitrarily. They are not arbitrarily there. Put there. No? There is a design. Okay? Shape. Okay? And openings. Do not allow openings in guards to pass 4 inches. So, we already know that. No? 4 inches between the members. Okay? And we have the uh, shape. Handrails and guards. Live loads. Okay? Live loads. So, this is something to do with the structural. Structural. How much is the live load? They, see, they are supposed to resist Uniform distributed force of two, uh, 200 pounds per square foot. Take note, 200 pounds per square foot. Applied in any direction at any point along the top. Okay? At any direction. They resist at any direction. 200 pounds per square foot. Okay? Uniform distributed force. Okay? I take note of that, uh, 200. What is 200 pounds per square foot? Please uh, convert. That is the load of the handrails and guardrails. So, so that is enough to support to one person per uh, every step. For every step. That is a uh, actually too much 200 pounds one person is not 200 pounds and one square foot is not uh, one person so therefore that is uh, sufficient enough to support one person per uh, thread if there uh, if there is one person per thread on the stairs and using the handrail the handrail is capable to support okay, for example the stairs has uh, 11 steps. There are 11 persons. Okay? They all grip the handrails and they are trying to what? To uh, stabilize themselves against, for example, earthquake. Against earthquake. Stabilize themselves. They are holding on to the guardrail. The guardrail must be able to support all of them. Because 200 pounds per square foot is enough. Okay? That is the capacity. Okay? Okay. Maximum space in the triangle formed by a thread, riser, and stair guard bottom rail. So, bottom rail. So, that is uh, on the lower part. Okay? So, on the lower part. On the bottom part. So there is no bottom there is no bottom rail here so there's no this is supposed to be the bottom rail this line so there's no bottom rail the bottom rail 6 inches okay so uh, let us complete this uh, emergency escape openings copy okay are there any question so there's none let us uh Complete this emergency escape openings, escape opening location. Okay. Provide uh, escape opening in most basement. You are not required to provide basement escape opening if the basement is what 
not more than 200 square feet or very small okay so so if the basement is used only to house mechanical appliances so not for habitation okay it is not for escape opening location so provide it's a basement uh, bedroom with escape openings okay open all escape openings directly into the area that leads directly to public way so this is for protection really okay you may open an escape opening under a deck or porch if okay the escape opening can be opened to the full required dimension and if the space under the deck or porch is at least 36 inches high okay space under the deck okay Note that the escape opening may be required when uh, covering, converting a previous unfinished basement into its finished space. Okay. Verify requirements with the local official. Lock and bars on openings. Do not cover or obstruct escape openings with locks, bars, screens, or similar devices unless they are operated from the inside. Okay. To prevent being locked up inside without tools, keys, lock combination, special knowledge. Okay? So, those locks must be very simple. No need for special knowledge of opening it up and can be operated with a simple so, windows. The windows and doors are vertical openings. Right? And doors and windows are also used for escape. Okay, so egress windows allow emergency exit from a structure and must meet certain minimum size. That's why we have minimum dimension for windows. So for windows, we have minimum 34 inches. Okay. So floor, this is the floor height, seal height. Seal meaning this part of the window. This is what we call seal. Seal of the window here. So, window jam. This is the window jam. Okay. Seal is this part only. Okay. Window jam. Window jam here is colored what? Uh, dark red. Window jam. But seal is the lower portion of the jam. Okay. That is 44 inch maximum okay so 44 inches is equivalent to what 44 inches is equal to 1.1 meters so 1.1 meters maximum then uh, minimum size okay window for 24 height okay 24 minimum this that is for the person to be able to escape through it that is the reason okay to be able to escape through it so if uh, this is uh, not the minimum the person would be trapped inside okay? so minimum 24 minimum 34 so 34 is what 850 850 24 is what 600 so 600 by uh, 850 that is the minimum okay so if the uh, uh, window is 20 inch width so we have what 40 watt so if uh, the window is 34 we have 24 so for 20 inches, 20 inches is uh, how many? 20 inches is uh, 500. 20 inches 500. Amen. So 41 is what? 500, 500. So 1. 41. Let us compute 41. So 44 is 1.1. 1. Uh, 41 is equal to 1 meter 1 meter and 40 mm yes 
the escaping size that satisfies building code for egress. This is for safety. Egress meaning going out. Okay. So, window wheels. Okay. Also, uh, we have another assignment task for experience. So, you have to get an experience for your window. Only the window. At least one window. At least one window for escape. Not all windows are designed for escape. Okay? So, at least one in your house. Okay? Must have this minimum requirement. That window is going to the outside space. Do not measure the window as an escape window if this is directly what facing a wall of the neighbor. Okay? If this is facing a wall of the neighbor, how can you escape the fire? So this window is for escape. That's why if you are looking out, you are looking at the street, for example, going out of the house. Okay? So I will again screenshot this so that uh, we can have a task okay for this egress window okay this is an egress type of window so provide uh, all below so what uh, is this uh, window wheels okay Provide the uh, all below grade uh, escape openings with a window well. Okay. So, egress uh, window wells here. Okay. 36 minimum, 36 minimum. So, this is a uh, window well. Okay. Must be at least 36. Okay. It is wide and project 36 from the foundation. Those deeper than 44 must have a means of escape, such as a uh, tire. Design that form steps of the attached ladder, drainage at the bottom well should be connected to the foundation drain or rather provide approved drainage system. Right? Window wells. Okay? So like this is a window well. Provide each window well with at least uh, 9 square feet clear opening. So 9 square feet is 9 square feet. 3 by 3. Okay. Install a uh, permanent ladder if uh, the window will bottom is more than 44 inches below grade. So, so meaning this is the grade this is the grade uh, line. So, below grade, if this is 44 going down. Okay. So, you have to provide the ladder. For example, like this. This is a ladder steps this is the steps okay it's like this window wells okay grease doors very fast okay grease doors necessary uh this is the type of door to the outside that meets all egress doors requirements for accessibility in opening size every dwelling must have at least one that is what i'm talking about at least one at least one window, at least one door for escape. Okay. The egress uh, door is usually the front door. Other exterior doors need not comply with the egress door requirement. So you need only one compliant door and windows. And you are uh, so complying with the codes provision. Uh, codes provision. Egress door requirements provide at least one egress door that... Uh, it's accessible, okay, from all areas of the home. That door must be accessible from all areas. Install a side hinge English door that provides a clear opening at least 32 inches wide and 78 inches high. Okay, side hinge. So side hinge, flapper like this. Side hinge door, flapper, okay. And measure door width between the face of the door when open to 90 degrees and outer ends of the door stop, okay? So, 90 degrees opening. 
So, you can open the door not less than 90 degrees. Okay? <coughs> hey, excuse. This means that the uh, 36 inch by 80 inch door is required using standard size doors. Okay? 36 by 80. Okay, so 36 by 80 is the dimension. You need at least one door that satisfies this. Okay. Violation. Use only thumb latch dead bolts on egress doors. So your egress doors must not have this type of blocking mechanism because that is for emergency uh, escape and you need to what? You need to find out uh, the key. How can you make an emergency exit when you are needed to find the key first? So that is violation. Okay. Oh, what else? I'll provide a landing on the interior and exterior sides of the door. Build its landing at least as wide as the floor. Okay, the same with the previous discussion. Oh, the door is 36. So provide uh, the door, eh? the door 36 by 18. Okay, 36 by 18. So, build the interior exterior landings that more than one and a half inches below the top of the threshold. Threshold, okay? Then you may build the exterior landing that more than seven and three fourth inches below. Okay? You may build the exterior landing with more than two percent slope. Not more than, okay? So, that's why uh, in our plumbing system, this is the maximum, two percent slope maximum. 1 to 2 percent is there. Uh, is this slope in our plumbing system. So, they are what? Uh, complementing each other. Okay? So, you will not violate the other code when you are going to satisfy this code. We are not violating plumbing code. Provide drop or stairway to an egress door that is not at grade level. So, we need those type Okay, so we have about 36 minimum right here. Space, this is the door. This is the door. We have 36 open space. That is the landing. That is what we mean by landing. We have unobstructed. There is no obstruction in this part. There is no obstruction. If there are obstruction, then dead. That is not an open space. This must be an open space, 36 mi inches minimum. Okay? And this is what? 7 3 port maximum threshold. Okay? Here. Okay? So that is a requirement. So exterior doors, uh, exterior doors landing requirement. So let us uh, go, move on faster. So, we need this required on both sides. Okay. Landing for exterior doors. Landing is larger than the door width. Okay. So, but minimum, minimum is uh, 36 inches. Okay. 36 inches. So, what are the takeouts from this? Okay, put the landing on exterior interior, build its landing 36 inches deep, so the same, the same uh, requirement, so we don't need to discuss it separately, 7 and 3 port, again the same, the same requirement, 2% the slope, the same requirement, okay, same requirement from the previous one. So site address, install approved building address numbers or letters that are clearly legible from the road. Planting the property. 
So do you think this is just for display? No. In other countries, this is for emergency responders to quickly locate the property because uh, when your neighbor is burning, you will call the 911 and tell them the address of the property and the firefighters will look at that address. That's why it is a requirement. Okay? Okay? That is for emergency responders. Okay? So, not for display. Okay? Make the letters and or numbers Arabic type and at least four inches tall. Oh, there is a, there is a provision. Okay? At least one half inch wide. Okay? Four inches tall, one half inch wide, so that the responders could easily recognize it. One half inch wide and four inches tall. The lettering, the lettering itself, the number, the block number, the lot number, the house number, right, must be written this way. Make the letters of or numbers contrast with the background, okay, for easily identification this is not for any other reason okay doors and windows hazard okay so let us uh, move on to this picture hazard so material this is a safe safety glazing in and near doors so this type of glass okay so this type of glass is laminated type of glass for safety. Okay. Uh, there is a clear membrane, the center layer, to keep the shattered glass more or less in place when it breaks. Okay. okay. Tempered glass is another common type of safety glazing. This is what we mean by glazing. The setting up, the putting up of glass materials into windows, doors, and other openings. That is what we call by glazing. Okay? Okay, that is more or less the doors and windows hazard. That is hazard doors. Okay? So, pictures of people severely cut when they fell or were pushed through doors and windows containing regular glass. That's why we need what? Safety glass shut, shatters into very small pieces that are less likely to cause cyber cuts. That is why the reason. Okay? Safety glazing and fall hazards are complicated and many exemptions. Our objective here is just to introduce the subject and make you aware of it. Okay? So safety glazing usually means tempered glass. However, other uh, materials also qualify. This is why it is called safety glazing, not safety glass. Okay? Most safety glazing should uh, be identified with permanent writing in one corner of the glazing. This is uh, uh, what you can see on the car doors or in the car windows. In the car uh, glass glazing, there is a writing. Okay. This writing can be very difficult to see, so look uh, closely before deciding that the glazing is not safety glazing. So, look at your uh, glass uh, portion. Okay. Look at your uh, safety glazing. Okay. There must be some uh, notes here, writings, specs, or something. Okay. Safety glazing, that's all about it. Okay, so safety glazing is not required on top of this because you are not going to use this to escape. <coughs> you are not going to use this to escape. That's why safety glazing is not required. Only the regular glazing, not safety glazing. Okay. Safety glazing required here because when you cannot open this up, you will what break this glass in order to escape so safety glazing and therefore 
there is a requirement they mention here okay there is a requirement so that one person can get out from this uh, opening oh. this must be a safety grazing okay so safety grazing there are stairs and uh, guards safety glazing their wet surfaces so wet surfaces okay must have provision uh, the same the same uh, dimensions are requirements safety glazing is stairs and guards same dimension but uh, when you are confronted with bathtubs so 60 inches horizontally from edge of bathtubs okay Exemptions include windows when the bottom edge of the building is located 16 inches or more above the walking surface. Okay? The 16 inches horizontally from the edge of bathtub, shower, swimming pool, whirlpool, hot tub, sauna, mm -hmm. steam room. Okay? Window fall protection. Install a means to restrict the distance that an operable window can open so that a 4 inch diameter sphere cannot pass. Okay? Uh, the top of the window sill is less than 24 inches above the finished. Okay, so the same dimension requirement. The top of the window sill is more than 72 inches above. So this is the first 72 inches above the exterior surface below. Exterior surface below. Okay, comply this provision by permanently restricting the window opening. Okay. You may comply with this provision by installing a window opening control device that complies with ASTM. Okay. So, ventilation and exhaust controlling the moisture level is unimportant for our comfort as a human being. Okay. Moisture. Okay. It's important. Too much moisture uh, can be significant risk to our safety. Okay? So this is sanitary. So current indoor air quality best practices also encourage removal of excess moisture and other contaminants from home. So in similar manner, contaminants is a sanitary requirement. Okay? Not only the excess moisture but contaminants. The greatest threat posed by a water vapor is, the, is that it provides one of three things that mold needs to grow. So molds will start to enter and grow our house because of the level of moisture that are present. So we need some ventilation and exhaust. Okay? Other two are the correct temperature and food. So that is one requirement for the mold to grow. So the presence of temperature, food. Mold grows at the temperature we humans prepare. So there is a little we can do about that. So the same environment, temperature environment that uh, we need. So molds grow in that temperature too. So, we need to control what? The moisture. Because molds eat almost any wood products in our homes are filled with these products. Okay? All the wood parts will be mold. Uh, food. That is the food for the mold. One thing we can do something about is moisture. That's why this is the reason. This is clearly the reason why we are controlling the moisture okay for comfort and for what contaminants okay Contaminant. water uh, vapor travels in air when uh, water vapor condenses on visible surfaces it provides the moisture that mold needs okay so when we see the, what is uh, often called mild dew Mildew is another name for mold. 
Uh, when water vapor travels into attics and wall cavities, it can condense and provide moisture for mold. Mold can grow in these hidden species for long periods of for long periods before it is discovered. Damage to the home can be significant when mold grows for long periods of time. Little by little, very little damage per day, per day, and so on. After uh, one year, after two years, significant damage. Okay? Water vapor is always present in every home. Some water vapor, of course, naturally, of course, we always have water vapor in uh, the air. We introduce some water vapor into your home with every breath we take. Most of the water vapor in home results from activities such as bathing, cooking, clothes drying. So, take note of this area where in the house space you take a bath where in your house space you cook where in the house space you cook dry clothes these are what toilet and bathroom kitchen and laundry area so those area we need immediate control of moisture okay to remove the excess water vapor caused by these activities okay so, moisture exhaust requirements generally are met with combination of natural, meaning opening of windows, and mechanical, meaning exhaust fans, okay? The bathroom and kitchen are the two rooms where ventilation is That's why I told you, toilet and bathroom and kitchen, okay? And uh, laundry area, okay? Air movement requirements provide outdoor light and ventilation to bathrooms, toilet rooms, and uh, similar areas using windows or doors containing glazing. Okay. Light and ventilation provide total glazing area of at least 3 square feet. Glazing area minimum 3 square feet with at least 1.5 square feet operable. What do you mean by operable? Can be open and close. Okay? Open the glazing directly to the street, public or alley to the yard, or located on the same lot. Best practice is to equip every bathroom with a ventilation fan. Why not? This is the reason. Why? Okay? This is a requirement of the code, air movement. But we usually do not do this because the minimum in our building permit is what uh, building design electrical and plumbing that is the minimum there is no minimum included sanitary this is a sanitary question this is a sanitary mold sanitary <coughs> hey Ventilation, contaminants, these are sanitary engineering, okay? And they are required for commercial, not residential. Sanitary permit is required for commercial in our country. So you may replace the uh, glazing with artificial light. Oh, doing it with lighting and exhaust ventilation. Provide exhaust ventilation at least 20 cubic feet per minute. So 20 cubic feet per minute. Imagine this. 20 cubic feet per minute. Per minute. Every one minute. This is minimum. This is not maximum. This is minimum. Okay, I just uh, took this screenshot. Okay, this. So, what? Uh, 20 cubic feet per minute. Continuous ventilation or at least 50 cubic feet per minute for a switch ventilation fan. So, continuously. So, I have a, uh, what, switch ventilation. So, I need, what, 50 cubic feet per minute. Okay. 
Imagine that. Imagine that quantity of air. 50 per minute, ah, per minute. So, 50 cubic feet per minute. Almost, it is almost 60 cubic feet per minute. What is the importance of 60 cubic feet per minute? We can easily, what, think about 60. One minute is 60 seconds. So, meaning, maybe at least one cubic feet per second. Okay? So, it is very close to one cubic feet per second. For a switch, ventilation fan. We usually have switch ventilation fan in uh, our country. We do not have what? Continuous. This is what? Uh, energy uh, consuming uh, device. So, that is not usually the case. An air condition unit has a built-in exhaust. There is a built-in exhaust in air conditioning unit. So, so you have what? Uh, but it is uh, not continuous. So, it must have what? 50 cubic feet per minute. Right? So, comply with the ventilation, fan manufacturing instruction, or uh, general codes about exhaust duct type and length. 3 inch diameter duct. Okay? 3 inch diameter duct may not be allowed as an exhaust duct. 4 inch diameter or larger may be required. So, 4. 4 is the ducting or uh, in order to carry this amount of in our, uh, in our houses, in our homes, it is not being followed. This is for health and safety. Health, safety, and what? Maintenance on uh, prevention of what? Molds. Uh, if there are plenty of molds, not only the woods being eaten by the molds, but we are susceptible to disease. Okay? Disease. Okay? So, discharge bathroom and toilet room, ventilation fan, exhaust directly outdoors. Okay? Discharging a ventilation fan, exhaust duck into or toward an attic, soft fit or crawl space, Ventilation opening does not comply with this provision. So, directly outside, not going to other uh, areas inside the house. Okay? So, fit. Okay, so, what do you mean by so fit? So, <clears throat> those are the requirements. Okay? It has a soffit, meaning the underside of an architectural structure, such as an arch, a balcony, or a overhanging eaves. Okay? The underside, the underside, that is soffit. So, arch, underside of an arch, balcony, underside of a balcony. Underside of overhanging eaves. So, so fit. So, we have what? Uh, so fit uh, construction. Underside of a part or member of a building. Okay, so fit design. We are designing that because uh, condominium unit is very small. Even the so fit area, uh, they want to have a usage, uh, usefulness. Uh. Okay. Uh, do not uh, recirculate air from bathrooms within the residence. So just uh, remove the air, used air and then uh, use the new fresh air from outside. So. Okay, provide an uh, automatic gravity operated damper or exhaust and do not uh, direct uh, outdoor exhaust opening such as from bathroom and kitchen saucepan into the walkway. Do not do it. So usually we are doing it exhausting the uh, those uh, openings into the walkway. So that is a violation 
protect uh, outdoor air intake and oxygen openings with a corrosion resistant screen having openings at least one port okay outdoor intake exhaust opening use corrosion resistant screens okay uh, and not more than one in, one half inch uh, or by louvers dampers or similar means so corrosion resistant dampers louvers this does not include clothes dryer exhaust openings do not cover clothes dryer exhaust openings with a screen okay so that is an exemption clothes dryer exhaust okay then uh, protect uh, outdoor openings against local weather conditions such as from rain and snow infiltration and from blockades by snow accumulation so it is not in our country to have snow so protect it only from rain protect outdoor openings against uh, rain vent fan labels so vent fan label check the information label attached to its uh, ventilation fan bathroom fans that are switch operated should be rated at least 50 cubic feet per minute so cfm 70 cfm it's okay because this is more than 50 so it is okay so for ventilation part okay cfm meaning cubic feet per minute but over 100 square feet or with uh, multiple tubs or showers should have higher capacity fans okay so the bigger the bathtub of course the uh, bigger the uh, exchange of ventilate, ventilated air okay the zone rating refers to the relative whiteness of the unit rated on a scale of one to seven Quieter fans have lower zone zone ratings. Zone rating here. Zones. So four. So this is not quiet. So one is the uh, ideal. So one to seven. So this is more than average, more than uh, the middle. No? One to seven. The middle is four actually. Zone. The quiet okay uh, terminate exhaust ducts directly outdoors with a cover so this is the covering usually lowered this is a lower this is a lower cover no? covering lower so violation do not terminate exhaust into an attic crawl space areas like this no? this is uh, an exhaust about four inches diameter requirement but do not do it on some inside space directly put it out outside the building kitchen exhaust requirement okay so here kitchen exhaust smooth wall galvanized metal required okay here smooth for a uh, range hood ducks so this is uh the hood of the range okay range meaning uh, the uh, cooking uh, equipment the range is a cooking equipment okay so this is what we mean by that here this is the hood hood this is the required ventilation exhaust we are not having this in our uh, house okay exhaust for kitchen so this is a violation how much provision 400 cubic feet per minute okay provide make up air for exhaust fans with a capacity of more than so minimum minimum is 400 so we have what 200 on other areas we have 400 on the kitchen okay 400 cubic feet per minute and normally we have what continuous of 20 cubic feet per minute 20 and for uh, non-continuous we have 50 but we have 400 here imagine the uh, 
the uh, ordinary provision at least 100 cubic feet per minute for intermittent foods. Okay? So again, 20 cubic feet for continuous. Okay? So now, this is for kitchen. Okay? 100, then this is 400. Make up air. This, that is make up air. Install a gravity operated or electrically operated damper to open uh, and close the take up air duct. Okay? So, this is how we have what? our downdraft ventilation. is a space saving alternative to exhaust food. So, very small area will be affected by this downdraft ventilation. Rather than put it on the, the hood is on top. The hood is on top of the cooking area. This is the hood. Okay. This is uh, what we call downdraft. This is downdraft exhaust. Okay. Replacing a rinse hood with a microwave oven for some point. So this is a uh, correct. This is a popular upgrade that is often installed incorrectly. Okay. Microwave oven. Okay. Read in follow manufacturer's instruction. Okay. Uh, microwave oven is a fire hazard. Born, ha born hazard. Okay. And it's also reduced the microwave service light. The following address and the most begin installation errors. So we have microwave requirement. 120 volts in uh, their country, in our country, that is 220 volts. And uh, 20 amp circuit, also the same in our country. 20 amp, but the minimum in our country is 30 amps right now. So, at least uh, 30 inches between the range top and the top of the cabinet. So, the open area from the microwave to the cabinet. 66 inches between the floor and the top of the microwave. So, those are the requirements. 66. Plug a microwave that comes from an attachment plug into a receptacle. Okay. Do not connect the microwave directly to electrical wires and do not use an extension cord. So, there is a plug that be used. Okay. So, connect the microwave to exhaust duct. Do not uh, simply blow the exhaust at the hole of the cabinet where the exhaust duct is located. Install the back drop damper if one is supplied. So, this is what we mean by 66 inches. Okay, 66 inches. This is a microwave, 66 inches, okay? Clothes dryer, exhaust requirement, installation requirements. For clothes dryers, not uh, very much applied in our country. So, uh, let us just look at the picture. So, it's uh, the ducting. Use trap hangers to support rigid ducts. Install hangers at joints. Okay. So, joints. Hangers here. This is what we call hangers. Joint. So, hangers, joints. Support hangers. Tip. Position the hangers so that the duct work doesn't make contact with the floor joints or other structural members. Do not make it in contact. Okay. So, there is a small space between. So, that is uh, for ducting. So, this is how we uh, limit closed dryer, exhaust duct, develop blend. Do not uh, do it more than 35 feet. So, 35 feet, development blend. Uh, develop blend or a dryer okay? we are not doing this actually so it is now provided with a code but it's not so transition duct this is directly the uh, flexible hose from the dryer okay? Okay? so we are not uh, actually having the closed dryer usually at home so I have my own uh, closed dryer I have my uh, clothes uh, washing machine together with dryer 
so in one single unit so, so transition duct we have what again lower so duct termination vent okay, of the, this part three feet minimum by going up and sideways distance from door and windows okay transition duct use install transition duct so flexible uh, plastic usually okay? transition ducts like this okay? transition duct okay? so flexible material so close dryer make up air so 200 cubic feet per minute again okay? so, 100 square inches in closed dryers are installed we need that uh, 100 square inches area okay? for make up air so I think this is the last topic smoke and carbon monoxide alarms so it is uh, required by the code but uh, these are for uh, general safety smoke alarm for fire carbon monoxide alarm for our health safety so carbon monoxide is a fuel that will develop in our uh, air and also not only flammable but also uh, poisonous right? smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms are required in new construction for new buildings, carbon monoxide. Take note, this is 2015-2017 codes. Okay? Carbon monoxides are triggered. This is carbon monoxide alarm. Okay? Triggered by the presence of carbon monoxide gas. Smoke alarms are available in photoelectric and ionizing models. In ionizing alarms, okay, let it be. Ionizing alarms. A small amount of current flows in an ionization chamber. Okay. Combination smoke and carbon uh, monoxide alarms are not preferred because the service light of different alarms are different. So, must be separate. Okay? You should uh, replace all the smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Smoke alarms have a useful life of 10 years. Okay? This one, 10 years. Okay, carbon uh, monoxide useful life of 7 years. So, Alarms are older than this, may not detect smoke and carbon monoxide when needed. So that's uh, the reason why we have to replace them every 10 or 7 years. Okay. So, how to install? Take a look at this. Smoke alarms in and near all bedrooms and all levels of my home. Every bedroom, okay? We have one, two, three, four. Every bedroom, we have a smoke alert. Okay? Near all bedrooms. So, this is smoke alarm near bedroom. Smoke alarm near bedroom. So, total of one, two, three, four, five, six, six smoke alarms. Okay? On all levels. And meaning, meaning uh, every floors, any every floors we have smoke alarm. So, uh, photoelectric alarms. So letter C, heat alarms. Letter D. So, photoelectric alarms. This, this type, heat alarms. So heat alarms and ionizing alarms, almost similar, almost similar. B and C. Letter D, this is, letter D is what? Heat alarms. So, this is heat alarms. This is, uh, this is ionizing alarm. Okay? So, usually 10 feet is the uh, immediate vicinity provision of installing this uh, smoke alarms in all bedrooms okay within three feet horizontally from the door 
So, 3 feet to, from the door. Let's, let's see smoke alarm provision. Smoke alarm provision. Air movement, zero, four, zero. Let us screenshot this one. Of a home. Screenshot, smoke alarm. Zero, four, one. Zero, four, one, and this. Do not uh, install an ionization smoke alarm closer than 20 feet horizontally from permanently installed cooking appliance. So, in the kitchen, because there are plenty of smoke, that's why you have what? Food for smoke and uh, exhaust air. So, do not install a photoelectric smoke alarm closer than 6 feet horizontally from permanently installed cooking appliance. So, you may substitute a security system that uh, includes smoke alarms if it provides the same protection as hardwired smoke alarm. The security system smoke alarm must comply with the NFPA 72 standard and must be permanent uh, fixture in home. Security system smoke alarm installed as a substitute system cannot be leased. They must be a permanent part of your home. Smoke alarm locations not required. Okay, so crawl spaces, so smoke alarm is required in bedroom and near those bedrooms. Actually, habitable, habitable areas. But not in crawl spaces, attics, uh, middle level of split uh, level homes. Okay, so if the middle level is less than one story uh, below upper level and if there's no door between levels, okay. No need. Note some jurisdictions require smoke alarms on all levels of split level home. Verify smoke alarm location requirements with your building officials. Smoke alarm power source, backup, electrical wiring must have a battery backup. So, because uh, if uh, there's no electric uh, supply, maybe brownout, okay, so still you have the uh, smoke alarm working. Connect these uh, alarms together so one alarm activates all alarms. So interconnect. Uh, like this one, interconnection. So connected, 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 connected. So the uh, the broken lines means wiring. Those broken lines are wiring. So power arc, uh, fault circuit interrupted. Okay? Protection for smoke alarm. So, this is what? Electrical device. Similar to breaker, but this is uh, more effective and more efficient than breaker. This is arc fault circuit interrupter. Okay? Uh, smoke alarm inst installation. Uh, use uh, the manufacturer's instruction. Usually, it is a uh, Located on ceiling, on a wall, not more than 12 inches from the ceiling. Okay? Wall, not more than 12 inches from the ceiling. So, wall, uh, measure the distance, one foot. Do not locate a smoke alarm closer than 4 inches to the intersection of a wall and ceiling. So, about 12 inches, okay? So, not closer than 4 inches. The smoke alarm may not detect smoke. In this dead zone. That is the dead zone. That is the what corner dead zone. Smoke alarm updates when remodeling. Okay, so remodeling the house, the home, stereo. So you have to install uh, when you are what going to repair, going to install plumbing, it's back and so on. Up to uh, do this stereo works as a uh, roof, sidings, windows, and door repair. So, you have to update the location, the position, so that it do not have this, what, dead zone. Okay? Verify requirements and exemptions with the uh, local official. 
battery power and wireless interconnection may be allowed. Carbon monoxide alarm requirements. Install carbon monoxide alarms in homes equipped with fuel-fired appliances. So, LPG, for example. Oil-fired furnaces in homes with attached garage or fireplace. So, if you have a car, there are plenty of carbon monoxide poisoning with fatalities previously in our country. There are so many. That is carbon monoxide poisoning. They died inside the car. So, garage, cars, and those area in uh, our uh, home near the garage. So, install carbon monoxide alarm. Okay, install an alarm that comply with UL 2034. So, install within the immediate vicinity, 10 feet. When you, when you find a word immediate vicinity, that is 10 feet. Okay. Bedrooms, connection of carbon monoxide alarms to each other is not required. Unlike the fire alarm. Okay. Unlike the uh, what? The uh, smoke alarm. Smoke alarm must be connected to each other. But what? Uh, carbon monoxide alarm do not need to be connected from one another. Install carbon monoxide alarms in the bedroom with uh, fuel fired appliances located in the bedroom. So, uh, use the manufacturer's instruction. Do not locate a smoke alarm. So, near the corner, this is four inches from the corner. That is a violation. This is dead zone. Okay, so that's all. Oh, uh, it's already six o'clock. So, let us uh, have a 30 minutes break. Uh, and continue with the other course. Okay. So, any question? So, that's all with the one uh, building and safety and sanitary uh, requirements from the home. Uh, there are no questions. Again, this is your professor, Dr. Ripi, Preaching Engineering Coordination.